five minutes. In the news while we've been away, there are suspicions that some Buddhists may have been secretly eating British beef. At the World Summit in Moscow, there's an awkward moment as Boris Yeltsin gets a whiff of vodka. And in London's West End, there's a discreet meeting of Paula Yates' creditors. Keep abreast of current affairs with Have I Got News For You, Friday at 10 on BBC Two. An update on the news now on BBC Two with Moira Stewart. Good afternoon. The Agriculture Minister, Douglas Hogg, is due to make a common statement aimed at restoring confidence in the beef industry. He's likely to concentrate on the compensation to be paid to different sectors of the industry. Any legal move to lift the export ban will be welcomed by beef farmers who've now nearly spent a month in limbo. Like these in Preston this morning, their bank balances have been drained, keeping cattle with no financial return. Farm leaders today said they were finally induced to mount a legal challenge to the export ban by a succession of comments from EU officials. First, the Agriculture Commissioner, Franz Fischler, said he'd happily eat British beef, and that the ban he'd organised was for commercial, not health reasons. And now Jacques Santerre, the Commission's president, has revealed he too would eat British beef. But farmers know consumer confidence won't return because of what's decided in court. Continental shoppers in particular have remained cautious. This afternoon, the Agriculture Minister, Douglas Hogg, is expected to announce how much compensation will be given to beef farmers. But with seasonal changes underway, they say they also need clarification now on a slaughter policy. So they'll know whether they can continue with beef or be forced to turn their land to some other use. The United States is working on an agreement to bring an end to the fighting between Israel and Hezbollah forces in Lebanon. The conflict intensified this morning with Israel attacking a Palestinian refugee camp near Sidon and Hezbollah firing on settlements in northern Israel. The Israeli bombardment of Hezbollah positions is more intense and widespread than at any time since this conflict began. This morning, the Israelis attacked a Palestinian refugee camp near Sidon. It's a known base for elements which oppose the PLO and its role in the peace process with Israel. The attack signals an increasing willingness by the Israelis to hit targets not directly associated with Hezbollah. And after the raid, a pro-Israeli radio station warned people in Lebanon not to go near any area which may house anti-Israeli factions. As the fighting continues, so does the suffering. Near the port of Tyre, there are reports that a house containing 40 villages has been hit, killing at least one person and trapping as many as six others. Despite the widespread damage, there's no indication here that people are blaming Hezbollah for their suffering. Indeed, there's evidence that the current wave of fighting may be driving displaced people into the arms of the fundamentalists. The inquest into the death of an IRA terrorist who blew himself up in the Aldwych bus bomb in February has recorded a verdict of accidental death. 21-year-old O'Brien was killed when the device he was carrying apparently exploded prematurely. Four other passengers on the bus were injured. More news at 5 to 4. Good afternoon. A farmer in Beckingham in, Lic in Lincolnshire who faced financial ruin over the BSE crisis is believed to have become the first person in Britain to take his own life because of the scare. 58-year-old John Capp was found dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. Yorkshire Water has agreed to pay out hundreds of thousands of pounds to councils in West Yorkshire for the extra cash they had to spend during the drought. The biggest payment goes to Calderdale Council, who had to buy in bottled water for distribution to the elderly and to residents of care homes. Pupils at All Saints School in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire are being offered vaccinations following an outbreak of meningitis. A 13-year-old girl and a 10-month-old baby have died from the illness and another child is in hospital. That's it. We'll be back with another bulletin in about an hour's time. Now the National Weather Forecast with Suzanne Charlton. Good afternoon. We have got some wet weather around, but it's dragging its heels as far as moving east is concerned at the moment. 
on the radar we can see it almost stationary still affecting the western areas of uh, England and Wales, parts of Northern Ireland and patch your own over Scotland as well as Northern England but further east parts of East Anglia and South East England still having some spells of hazy sunshine and that's lifted temperatures at Stamstead up to 18 Celsius won't be as warm I don't think for tomorrow tonight will be mild that band of cloud giving its rain just edging a little further eastwards that slow process continuing through Wednesday morning and by the end of Wednesday afternoon some easternmost parts of England and Scotland still dull and a little wet with showers following on with the brighter weather in the west not quite as warm tomorrow bye bye Natural engineer is forced to take a second look at his skyscraper. The building had a probability, which you might say was 50-50, of falling down. It's as if you had the legs of a chair in the middle of the chair instead of on the outside. Suddenly, Manhattan is a potential danger zone. This building could have killed tens of thousands of people. The Works, a compelling new arts documentary series, begins with All Fall Down, tonight at 8 on BBC Two. Today's business in Parliament, now on BBC Two, live at Westminster with Nick Ross. Oh!